So this video lecture is all about influence line for pin jointed truss. Before we move ahead, we will see how the load distribution takes place in a truss. This video is courtesy of Mr. Structures from YouTube lecture. Suppose we want to build a truss bridge that provides a passage for vehicles across a canal. The structure is going to be constructed in such a way that the vehicle load transfers to the two side trusses via a series of beams supporting the bridge deck. The bridge is expected to support the maximum load of a truck having three axles. For the sake of our analysis, this can be viewed as a series of concentrated loads spaced according to the distance between the axles. So, we wish to determine the maximum impact that the moving load series could have on a given truss member. More specifically, we want to determine the truck location on the bridge that induces maximum axial compressive or tensile force in the member. We can solve this problem using influence lines. But before we get into the analysis details, let's visualize how the load transfers from the truck to the truss joints. In this visualization, I am going to assume that the entire load of the truck is concentrated at its center of gravity. As shown here, the bridge deck rests on seven beams, each attached to two truss joints, one on either side of the bridge. Here are the beams supporting the deck. And here are the exact same beams shown attached to the truss joints. When the truck enters the bridge, when the load is directly above the outermost beam, the entire load transfers to that beam. The load is then distributed to the two truss joints supporting the beam. When the truck moves forward, when it is somewhere between the first beam and the second beam, the load is distributed between the two beams in proportion to its distance from them. In turn, the beam loads are transferred to their respective end truss joints, like this. So, as the truck moves forward, this pattern of load transfer shifts forward from joint to joint until the vehicle leaves the bridge. So that was a wonderful lecture. After that, we will continue with our types of trusses. These are some of commonly used trusses. This, this is also called king post truss. This hoe, this is Pratt truss. This is also used. Warren truss is also commonly used. Fink truss is commonly used in industrial shades. And uh, Pratt is also very commonly used. So most of these uh, trusses are commonly used. Uh, but for ILD, we should consider the type of trusses based on the load transmission. So essentially, there are two types of truss. First one is the deck type truss and the other one is through type truss. So you can very well see in this picture that when the load is moving on the top of the bridge or we can say that load moves on the top cord like in this case, like in this case. So this is called deck type truss and on the other type, on the other type, you can very well see from the section that vehicle load is moving inside the truss and load is acting on the lower lower deck so in this case load is moving on the top cord and in this case the load is moving on the bottom cord so this is a pictorial view of through type truss so we can say that truss is composed of two trusses one on this on either side of the bridge floor beams these are the floor beams you have already seen in the video and there will be stringers so these long long beams are called the stringers and this is called the deck and the compression members are called the struts and this blue lines are the bracing so there are this is portal bracing and this is lateral bracing and load is transferred through deck from deck it will move to the stringers from stringer it will go to the floor beams floor beams are so adjusted that they are connected at the joint only so in truss it is assumed that load is transferred 
at the intersection points of the member only so you can very well see that this cross beams or floor beams are placed exactly at the joint thus this is necessary for a truss to be a axially loaded member so we'll start with the numerical so in this given truss we have to calculate the ild for vertical reaction ra and rd and uh, forces in member ef so this is the force in member ef diagonal member bf and bottom called bc we'll start with ra so as we know that as per the definition of influence line diagram it is the variation of the stress function due to moving load so this is our unit moving load so it will change its position assumption of truss we can very well say that the load position will be a then from a the load will move to b then from b the load will move to c and d so load will be applied at the joint survey so how we'll calculate the value of ra for any load position how you generally calculate the value of ra so we consider the entire truss and consider the equilibrium condition so two unknowns are there ra and rd so what we do we take moment about point d so what happens this unknown becomes irrelevant in the equation so equation will be based on the unknown so what is the distance it is ra into 6 and it will be 1 into 6 So six six cancel out. We will get value of R A is equal to one. So as we already know that when the load is at point A only, the entire force will be taken up by the reaction at A. Similarly, when load is at D, all the reaction will go to the support only. The value of R A will be zero when the load is at D. Similarly, for this load position. From sigma F Y, R A plus R D is equal to one. So if R A is equal to one, R D is going to be zero. So this is a little understanding what we need. So suppose I take a general equation somewhere here. I'll take the load and this distance is x. So the remaining length will be L minus x. So moment at D will be moment at D will be R A into L. So R A into L minus one into L minus x. since a is rotating clockwise and this unit load is rotating anti clockwise so i have kept it on the other side of the equation so we get the general equation ra is equal to l minus x we uh, consider the load position for various load position of x let us say load is at a so what will be the value of ra it is going to be 1 so when the load is at this point the value of ra will be one how you get it it is nothing but l minus x by l so uh, l is 6 uh, and x for a will be 0 so so 6 minus 0 by 6 will be 1 when load is at b what will happen the value of x is now 2 this value is 2 so what will be l minus x l minus x will be 4 so when we solve this we get ra is equal to 0.66 now we further ask our unit load to travel to point c the this distance will be 4 so l minus x will be 6 minus 4 that is 2 so ra value will be so ra value will be 0.33 similarly when your point load has reached to this position and it is now at point d so what will be the value of x now it will be 6 So six minus six will be zero. So R A value will be zero. But we have done. We have changed the load position from started with A, then we have moved to B, C, and D, and we have found the values for values of R A. So what we find that it is similar to what we studied in beam, and these all the other members are irrelevant in this. So it can be considered as a beam with four points A, B, C, and D. So ILD for RA will be nothing but it will be similar to what we draw for the beam only. So what is the total length? It is six. So this ordinate is going to be one. We write it as six by six. Subsequent ordinates will be this distance from here. It is four. So this ordinate is four by six. This ordinate will be two by six. 
so in all we did not see anything new in this ild for uh, reaction in case of determinant rust it is similar to that what we studied for uh, beam only so ra is like this and similarly we will see what is for ild for support reaction rd so uh, what we do whenever we want to find value of rd we take moment at this point so rd into rd into total length is l and suppose we have taken load somewhere at this point x so we are taking moment about a now so 1 into x is equal to rd into l so when we solve we get rd is equal to x by l so for various load position at x is when x is at a value of x will be 0 so x by l will be 0 so value of rd is 0 suppose now load moves to point b at point b value of x is 2 so rd will be 2 by 6 so this value will be 0.3 when load moves to point c rd value will be 0.66 and at d x value is 6 so 6 by 6 will be 1 so this is will be our ild at d we will make ordinate equal to 1 and we will write it as 6 by 6 this length is 4 so we can write it as 4 by 6 this length x is 2 x is 2 so we will put x by l so this will be 2 by l so this line is governed by the equation x by l so it is absolutely very easy to determine the ild for support reaction in case of a truss so now we will see how to find ild for axial force axial force in member ef where is that member so this is the member we are looking for right so what we do whenever we have to find uh, directly force on an intermediate member we should go for method of section so we'll cut this section all these three members will cut and divide the truss into two equal parts whenever we divide the truss into two parts the axial forces are now visible earlier they are equal and opposite so they are balanced but now when we have cut the section now they are they and cut the structure into two parts now they are visible so now we have to uh, draw the ild for that we should consider unit load also so the various load position will be a p c and d so these four places we have to consider the unit load so now we have to take uh, use the method of section so three members are cut like this so suppose the load is at point a so on the left hand side of this section there are two forces one is ra and other is this point load whereas on the other side only one external force that is rd apart from this three forces so what we should do we should take always take the easier side so we'll consider the equilibrium of right hand side this is what is written load is at left of joint b so we should consider the equilibrium for right hand side and right hand side we should consider this orange arrows so this orange arrows we will consider and we will try to find moment about any point where most of the unknown forces are zero so we see that there are three forces and these two forces FBF and FBC which which has name B in this are passing through point B both the members are passing through point B so what we do we will take moment about point P so what is left only force in FEF is left and on the other side there is one support reaction RD is left so what we do we take sigma moment of sigma moment of all forces of the right side of the section equal to 0 so what we will get FEF and this perpendicular distance is 1.5 so for generally for general equation we will write it as h only so what will be the value FEF into h about point B both the loads are moving in anti-clockwise direction both the loads have the tendency to move in anti-clockwise direction so I have kept it positive both FEF and 
R D I have taken as positive. So when we solve, we will get F E F is equal to minus R D by H into X. Now suppose we move to point B. For point A and B, this equation is valid when the load is left of the section. When load will cross the section and it will move to point C, then what we'll do? We'll consider the equilibrium. We'll consider the equilibrium on the left hand side because now on the left hand right hand side there are two forces rd and this unit load so what we do we'll consider the equilibrium on this side so we'll consider the blue arrows so there are three forces fef fbf and fbc and one more force is there that is ra so what we do we will again take moment at point b so because we are taking moment at point B, so force in member BF and BC will not produce any moment about that point because it is passing through that point. So we are left with FEF, it is rotating clockwise about point B. So I have kept both the values as positive. When we solve that, we will get minus RA by X upon H. So this is how we get the values but it is very simple to draw the ild for force in member ef we cut the we cut the section we cut the truss into two parts of the three forces of the three members which we cut two members are passing through point b that means to calculate the force in member fef we should take moment about this point and some when the load is at the left we are considering the equilibrium on the right hand side forces on the right hand side and when the force is on the right hand side we are considering the equilibrium on the left hand side so what we can say that in short we are actually calculating bending moment at point b only and the value of axial force in ef is negative when we solve this equation what we found both the values are negative so this means that the member will be in compression and what will be the final value of ILD for force in member EF? It is nothing but bending moment at B and all the ordinates are divided by H because all this both the values are divided by H. So in short we can say that FEF ILD is nothing but ILD for bending moment at B. So how we draw bending moment at B? You cut a section, you take a section at B this distance is 2, this distance is 4, total distance is 6. So we we'll make a hut or a hill at the section. So what will be the ordinate? It will be 2 into 4 by 6. So this ordinate will be 2 into 4 by 6. And ILD for EF is equal to ILD for bending moment at B divided by H. So we have divided the ordinate by H. Once the ILD is ready, we can calculate the ordinates and find the value of the value of the force in member EF for various loads. Now we'll come to a similar member that is bottom cord member force in member BC. So again we'll cut a section so that member EF, BF and BC will cut and divide the truss into two two parts. Now as soon as we cut the section the forces in the members will be visible now this will be visible so either we have to consider the equilibrium of left hand side or we can consider the equilibrium of right hand side so we are interested to find this force in member bc and we want that these two forces these two forces should be zero so name is f f e and f f b so in both the forces the, the member is passing through joint F so we should take moment at point F with the same logic what we can do is when the load is point A when the load is at point A and we are taking moment about point F we should consider the right hand side of the section here it is written that when load is left of the point F so we are taking moment at this point F and load is at point A or B so it is at the left of the section so what we should do we should consider the equilibrium from right hand side so we will consider this right arrows that is in that is shown by orange color 
so for both the cases when the load is towards the left of the section we should consider the equilibrium on the right hand side and should take moment about point f so we, what we see that it is rotating clockwise sorry this is rotating anti clockwise and this is rotating clockwise so fbc have taken positive minus rd into x so this distance i have taken as x and this distance height is h so when we solve we get the value of fbc is equal to rd x upon h and now suppose the load has crossed the cross the section and now it is at point d now it is at point d so what we should do we should consider for point c joint c and d we should consider the equilibrium of the left hand side so what we what equation will get so what equation we will get we will get fbc now we should consider this arrow and we are taking moment about point f so this force and this force moment about point f will be zero so only two forces are left fbc and this ra so ra into x we can write ra into x and what is this value this is h so this is rotating anti clockwise and this is rotating clockwise so we get a positive value whenever after we solve fbc from either side of the section what we got we got a positive value this means that the member is in tension and actually we are taking moment about point f and we are taking moment about point f and either we are taking the considering the section left side of the section or considering the right side of the section so that is nothing but bending moment about point f so so ild for axial force in member bc that is bottom quad member will be ild for bending moment at f divided by the value h so this is how we can conclude fbc is ild for bending moment at f divided by at f divided by h so this is the section and this is the hut this value is 4 this is 2 so this value will be ordinate will be 4 by 2 upon h and further we have to divide with the height of the truss that is h so we will divide and we will get the final ild for fbc so last member is bf that is the inclined member so it is neither horizontal nor vertical it is inclined so we have to resolve and then solve this so again we will take the same section now the three four three members are cut now what we should do we should try to have an exclusive equation for this force in member f b c so this is an inclined member it can be resolved horizontally as well as vertically what we find that force f e f and f b c they are horizontal force so when we take sigma f y is equal to 0 so we won't get the components of these horizontal forces so this will be a standalone force in our equation so this is a approach how we solve the inclined member so always resolve this and take sigma f y of the force so we have cut the section and now we will consider the equilibrium on the left hand side when the load is at point a or b so this is the section when load is at point a or b we should consider the equilibrium at right hand side so on right hand side what we will get we will get two forces one is rd and the vertical component of force f f b and remember that we have to use the sign convention that right up we have to take negative suppose we have taken a section and from right side force is moving upward right of the section force up we take it as negative right up negative so likewise we will get this is the section and we are considering the equilibrium on the right hand side so rd we are taking as negative or fbf sin theta that is going down side we are taken as positive and rd which is up right up we have taken negative so when we solve we get fbf is equal to rd by sin theta and when the load is at point c or it it is at point d what we do 
what we do we consider the equilibrium on the equilibrium on the left hand side so this is the section and force is either is at point c or d so we should consider the equilibrium on the left hand side so force ra will be like this and and one component of this force so which component the vertical component of this force so f bf sin theta it is also going up f bf sin theta is it is going up and ra is also going up so section left up we take as positive so both the values i have shown by by taking positive value so f bf sin theta plus ra is equal to 0 so when we solve we get minus ra by sin theta here i got plus rd so in short what we can say that from point a to b ild for ifb will be that of rd divided by sin theta and when the load position is at c and d ild for bf will be ild for minus ra that is drawn on the negative side divided by a constant value sin theta so in short what we can do we can say that actually when we are considering sigma fy for the portion of a structure we are calculating shear force and positive value positive value indicates tension and negative value indicates the compression so all the well all the uh, ordinates are to be divided by sin theta so suppose this when load is at a then load will be at b then load will be at c and finally the load will be at d so when load is at a and b we have to use this equation so we'll get plus rd so how you draw ild for plus rd it is going to be like this actually it should go like this but it is valid up to point b only so we'll draw this line suppose now that uh, load is now at point C. So how will how will calculate the shear force at when load is here? It will go like this. Then when the load is at D, how will calculate shear force? We'll calculate it by R A. So it is minus R A. So how we draw I L D for R A? I L D for R A will be drawn like this. So it should go up to here. What we find that some portion is positive, the other portion is negative. So positive part is having ordinate as rd by sin theta and negative ordinate is having value as minus ra by sin theta so this is how we will solve let's draw the influence line for one of the truss members say for member ab to do so, we start by placing a unit load at this joint and calculate the support reactions. Then, we cut the truss through member AB, draw the free body diagram for the right segment of the structure, and sum the forces in the Y direction in order to determine the axial force in AB. We then plot this value as a point in our line graph and use a straight line to connect it to the starting point of the graph. Now we move the load to the next truss joint. We then calculate the resulting support reactions and determine the force in AB, just like the previous step. This time, we get negative square root of 13 divided by 6. We plot the point and connect it to the previous point using a straight line. We continue moving the unit load from joint to joint, calculating the resulting force in member AB at each step and plotting the value on our line graph until the diagram is complete, like this. We are now in a position to determine the maximum effect that the moving load series would have on member AB.
Let's start by assuming that the truck is at this position on the bridge. This means the three concentrated loads are bearing down on the truss here, here, and here. Let's refer to these points as X, Y, and Z. The value of the influence line at Y and Z are already known, and we can determine the value at X using simple geometry like this. But what do these values represent? This value means that if we place a unit load at Z, the resulting axial force in member AB would be this. Similarly, if we place a unit load at Y, the resulting axial force in AB would be this. And if the unit load is placed at X, we get this for the axial force in AB. But what if, instead of a unit load, we place a load of 60 kilonewtons at Z? What would be the resulting axial force in AB? We can determine the resulting force by multiplying 60 by negative square root of 13 over 6. This gives us negative 36 kilonewtons. And what would be the resulting axial force if we placed a load of 70 kilonewtons at Y? it would be negative 21 kilonewtons. Further, if we placed a load of 65 kilonewtons at X, the axial force in AB would become negative 13 kilonewtons. Therefore, if all three loads are present at the same time, the total axial force in AB becomes negative 70 kilonewtons. Now, one can ask, is this the largest possible compressive force that can develop in member AB? To answer this question, we need to consider the other potential truck locations that create a large compressive force in AB. A visual inspection of the influence line suggests at least one more position for the truck that could produce a large member force. If the truck drives forward by 3 meters, we get this configuration for the load series. This position results in a compressive force of 129 kilonewtons in AB. So, are we done here? Did we find the largest possible compressive force in AB? Not quite. What if the truck is moving in the opposite direction? Would that cause different load patterns and perhaps a larger compressive force in the member? Let's investigate. If we change the truck's direction of travel and place the vehicle here, we get this configuration for the load series. Under this loading scenario, the compressive force in AB comes out to be 145 kilonewtons. As the truck moves forward like this, we can deduce that the axial force in AB becomes smaller and smaller since the influence line values associated with the load series become smaller and smaller in magnitude. Therefore, we can safely conclude that the largest compressive force in AB 145 kilonewtons. This force develops when the truck is in this direction and location. Now, let's turn our attention to calculating the maximum tensile force in AB. For this, we focus on the right side of the influence line, where the values are all positive, indicating the presence of a tensile force in the member. By visually inspecting the diagram, we can conclude that the maximum tensile force in AB occurs under one of two loading scenarios. This scenario, where the truck is facing to the right and the rear axle is on top of joint B. or this scenario, where the truck is facing to the left and the front axle is on top of B. For scenario one, we can calculate the tensile force in AB like this. For scenario two, we get a tensile force of 70 kilonewtons. Since there is no other loading scenario that could produce a larger tensile force in AB, we can therefore conclude our analysis by stating that the maximum tensile force in AB is 86 kilonewtons.
This force develops when the truck is in this direction and location. In summary, when we have a moving load series acting on a truss structure, we need to investigate all the loading scenarios that potentially could produce the largest axial force in the member under consideration. This means we need to move the load series in both directions, up and down the bridge, in search of the critical locations.